Hello everyone, welcome back to lecture 6 on Automotive and Vehicle Dynamics. In this lecture 6, we are going to cover our brakes topic. Let us have a small explanation about these brakes. Brakes is a device by means of which an artificial resistance is applied onto a moving body in order to resist or stop the motion of the vehicle. Let us have a clear look about working principle of brakes. Brakes mainly works on the principle of friction. When a moving element is brought in contact with a stationary element, then the motion of a moving element is affected. This is due to the frictional forces which acts in opposite direction of the motion and converts the kinetic energy into heat energy. Next, we have types of brakes. In this, we have three types. Let us have a clear look about each of them. First one is mechanical brake, the second one is hydraulic brake, and third one is pneumatic brakes. We look at the first type that is mechanical brake. This mechanical brake is further divided into four parts. We look at each of them. Let us have a clear look at uh, first part that is block or shoe brakes. Let us have a clear explanation about this block or shoe brake. Using this uh, picture, it consists of a block or a shoe which is pressed against the rim of a revolving brake. The block is made up of softer material than that of the rim. The friction between the block and the wheel causes a tangential braking force to act on the wheel which resist the rotation of the wheel. We we'll look at the second type in mechanical brakes uh, that is band brakes. Let us have a clear explanation about this band brakes. A band brake is a consist of a band of frictional material that tightens around a cylinder to prevent it from rotation. Generally, they are made up with rope or belts which is lined with a frictional, ma frictional material. A band is wrapped partially around a drum with its free end to a lever. This uh, uh, band is consists of one end with fixed member and another end is friable member that is mobile member. And next we have uh, an external forces can be applied to the free end of the lever for braking. Due to the additional forces, there is a friction between a band and tangential forces acts on the drum. The tightening of a band creates a tension in the band so that the connecting wheel will be stopped. We look at third type in mechanical brakes that is band or block brakes. Let us have a clear explanation about this third type. It is same as band brakes but only small changes will be there. That is a wooden block is placed in between the rope and the drum which result in increasing of braking capacity. Let us have a look at fourth type in mechanical brakes. The fourth type is internal expanding brakes. Let us have an explanation about this internal expanding brakes by the help of this picture. It consists of two brakes, two brake shoes that is S1 and S2. As we can clearly see in this image, two shoes were arranged. First one is S1, second one is S2. The outer surface of shoe are lined with frictional material to increase the coefficient of friction and to prevent wearing away the wearing away of material. Each shoe is pivoted at one end about a fixed fulcrum that is O1 and O2 and on other end it is connected to a cam control. And, uh, when a cam rotates, the shoe is pushed outwards against the rim 
of the drum. The friction between the shoe and the drum produces the breaking torque. Hence, reduces the speed of the drum. The shoe are normally held in the off positions by the help of spring arrangement. The drum is enclosed to the keep the entire mechanical uh, mechanism free from the dust and moisture. Everything is clear, right? This uh, internal expanding brakes consist of two shoes. They have named it that is S1 and S2. These two shoes are pivoted at one end that is at O1 and O2 and on other end a cam will be arranged. When this cam is rotated then along with that cam there will be movement in those two shoes and a spring is arranged in between these two springs these two shoes which allows two shoes to keep in contact all the time to keep in rest position and this entire assembly will be in a closed position to avoid form formation of dust and moisture inside the brakes till last slide we have studied about mechanical brakes and we have also looked at four phases in mechanical brakes from this slide we are going to study about hydraulic brakes and pneumatic brakes before going for hydraulic brakes and pneumatic brakes we need to possess some knowledge about pascal's law because hydraulic and pneumatic brakes were worked by the help of pascal's law okay let us have an explanation about this pascal's law uh, generally this pascal's law will be applicable for both gaseous and liquid first suppose a fluid is at rest in a closed container then the amount of external forces were acted at one side then the same amount of forces will be carrying will be transmitted to the another side without loss of any energy as we have studied in uh, previous slide about pascal's law let us have a look at uh, hydraulic uh, brakes these hydraulic brakes mainly uh, consist of the following components that is brake pad fluid reservoir master cylinder and wheel assembly let us have a small explanation about this uh, hydraulic brakes when the brake pad is pressed then the fluid from the fluid reservoir will be supplied through the master cylinder from there the fluid will with high pressure will be passing through the four wheel cylinder so that the piston on the four wheel cylinder will be moved against the wheel so that it will resist the motion of a vehicle okay it's clear uh, we can have a, a clear understanding in this image uh, external loads are acting on a brake pad then the amount of fluid which is already present inside the master cylinder will be subjected to high pressure and it is transmitted through the hydraulic lines to four wheels and uh, at the end of the four, uh, wheel cylinder there is an arrangement of piston which moves against the moving wheel and which resists the movement of a wheel generally uh, we have different types of constructions uh, in this hydraulic brake system uh, we looked at uh, as of now we have looked at uh, first type that is a uh, piston type and in next slide uh, let us have a look at uh, uh, second type of construction that is uh, internal expansion brake system this is also same uh, everything is same the working principle and the entire the thing will be same except the brake arrangement will be different in this uh, in the place of a piston we are arranging internal expanding brakes and next we have disc brakes uh, yeah, this is a third type of construction instead of uh, uh, piston or internal expanding brakes if we have arranged disc brakes then uh, the entire hydraulic systems will be 
the pressure from the hydraulic systems uh, will be using by this disk uh, system and uh, uh, we'll have a next uh, slide uh, we look at a third type that is pneumatic brake or air brakes entire working principle will be same as hydraulic brakes so we are directly concentrating on the components which we are using in this uh, pneumatic brakes uh, let us uh, go through the all the components uh, first one is compressor second one is uh, air reservoir governor and uh, fourth one is brake wall the fifth one is foot pedal sixth one is brake chamber and seventh one is slack adjuster let us have an explanation about uh, all these things uh, let, look at, let us look at the first one that is air compressor air compressor works by forcing air into a container and pressurizing it when the pressure is built up then the compressed air can be used as a energy as it releases okay and then next we will look at uh, air reservoir uh, air reservoir is a place where entire air will be stored okay uh, this uh, air will be uh, taken from atmospheric air atmosphere and uh, it will be stored in a container and next uh, we have a governor it will regulate the flow of uh, compressed air into the all ways all possible ways okay and next we have brake wall foot pedal and brake chamber uh, for these three i hope uh, you will understand uh, by learning about uh, the names itself and uh, uh, hope uh, no explanation is needed and uh, we look at uh, seventh one that is slack adjuster in earlier days uh, we use this uh, a manual slack adjuster as of uh, now uh, transformation takes place we were using automatic uh, slack adjusters um, let us look at uh, explanation about automatic slack adjuster an automatic slack adjuster is a designed to compensate for brake lining and drums and we have to minimum we have to min maintain we have to maintain a constant actuator stroke okay i uh, hope you have understand what are the components used in the uh, uh, pneumatic or air brake uh, mechanism and we look at uh, next uh, slide that is next we look at difference between electronic brake force distribution and anti lock braking system uh, electronic brake uh, force distribution or ebd is an external is an extension of an anti lock braking system okay through the anti lock braking system or abs ensures that the wheel do not lock under heavy brakes okay and then ebd makes sure that each wheel gets right amount of brake force or not okay uh, you will get uh, uh, what is the difference between ebd and abs in our next slide by looking at uh, a small video we can have a clear uh, understanding about uh, uh, anti lock braking system and ebd uh, do watch this video if you hope you all understand uh, how does uh, anti lock braking system helps the car to avoid slippage during brakes and how does ebd electronic brake force distribution is also helping these two are the uh, newly invented mechanisms and uh, these are implemented in many vehicles and uh, hope you all have a great time in this uh, session i hope uh, i'll meet you all in my next session thank you